One battleship changed everything. In May 1941, Germany's most powerful warship sailed into the Atlantic with a simple mission, sink British ships and win the war at sea. In just four days, she destroyed the pride of the Royal Navy in eight minutes. Then the entire British fleet came hunting for revenge. But here's what will surprise you. When they finally cornered her, the Bismarck wasn't actually sunk by enemy guns. The real story of how this unstoppable ship met her end starts with a secret that Germany kept hidden for decades. Hamburg Shipyard, 1936. German engineers were building something extraordinary. On paper, the Bismarck was supposed to weigh 35,000 tons to comply with naval treaties. The reality was different. She displaced over 50,000 tons, wrapped in 19,000 tons of the finest armor steel Germany could produce. The construction broke every rule. Instead of traditional rivets, 90% of the hull was welded together, eliminating thousands of potential leak points. The ship was divided into 22 watertight compartments with over 500 smaller sections, creating a honeycomb structure that could isolate damage. The armor was revolutionary. The main belt stretched 320 millimeters thick, covering 70% of the waterline, more than any battleship ever built. German KC armor steel achieved a surface hardness of 670 Brunel, superior to American plates and nearly equal to British designs. This wasn't just about size. Britain controlled the seas and German U-boats alone couldn't break that stranglehold. Germany needed a surface raider that could hunt British ships one by one, fast enough to escape what she couldn't fight and powerful enough to destroy anything she caught. The man chosen to command this beast had never led a ship before. Captain Ernst Lindemann was Germany's greatest gunnery expert. But giving him the country's most expensive weapon was unprecedented. Lindemann was obsessed with his ship, even refusing to call her she like other captains. The Bismarck was too powerful for that. He called her he. His obsession would soon prove deadly accurate. By early 1941, the Bismarck's armament was complete. Eight 38-centimeter guns in four twin turrets could hurl 800-kilogram shells over 35 kilometers. The secondary battery included 12 15-centimeter guns plus layered anti-aircraft defenses. The real revolution was fire control. Three director stations with radar sets gave the Bismarck radar-directed gunnery capability. While enemy ships relied on optical sights, she could hit targets through fog and darkness with deadly precision. The ship's propulsion was equally impressive. Twelve Wagner boilers fed three sets of turbines, generating 150,000 horsepower, driving her at over 30 knots with a range of 8,870 nautical miles. She could outrun any battleship and outfight any cruiser. But British intelligence was watching. Swedish planes spotted the German ships in the Baltic. RAF reconnaissance photographed them in Norway. As the Bismarck steamed north, the Royal Navy was setting a trap. On the morning of May 24th, that trap was about to snap shut. Dawn in the Denmark Strait. German lookouts spotted HMS Hood, Britain's most famous warship for 20 years, along with HMS Prince of Wales. The British ships charged forward, but their angle meant they could only use front guns while the Germans could fire everything. At 5.52 a.m., Hood opened fire. The Bismarck's radar-guided guns found their target quickly. Her fifth round of shots did the impossible. At least one shell went through Hood's thin deck armor and exploded in the ammunition storage. 112 tons of explosive powder blew up at once. HMS Hood broke in half and sank in eight minutes. 
of 1,419 men on board, only three lived. Winston Churchill's response was immediate. Sink the Bismarck. The victory came at a cost. Three shells from the Prince of Wales had struck the German battleship. The first hit the forecastle above the waterline, flooding bow compartments with up to 2,000 tons of seawater. The second struck below the armored belt, flooding a generator room and partially flooding an adjacent boiler room. These hits caused a nine-degree list to port and a three-degree trim by the bow, but the ship's compartmentalization contained the damage. The real problem was fuel contamination from the flooded bow sections, which reduced the ship's operational range by hundreds of miles. The Bismarck's armor had done its job. The main citadel remained intact, all machinery functioned, and the ship could still fight at full capacity. But Admiral Luchens faced a critical decision. Continue the mission with limited fuel or head for repairs in occupied France. He chose safety, not knowing this decision would doom them all. Now the Bismarck had to cross a thousand miles of ocean while every available British warship raced to intercept her. It became the greatest naval manhunt in history. For nearly two days, the German ship vanished into the vastness of the Atlantic. Then their luck ran out. May 26th, 690 miles from safety. A British flying boat spotted the Bismarck, just as British fuel supplies reached critical levels. HMS Ark Royal launched 15 swordfish torpedo bombers, ancient biplanes that looked like relics from World War I. These obsolete aircraft were so slow that modern anti-aircraft guns had trouble targeting them effectively. Through a storm of flak, the swordfish pressed their attack. Two torpedoes found their mark. The first exploded harmlessly against the armored hull. The second struck the worst possible location, the stern near the rudder controls. The hit jammed the steering gear, leaving the most powerful battleship in the world sailing helplessly in circles. A handful of obsolete biplanes had accomplished what the finest ships in the Royal Navy couldn't do. May 27th brought HMS King George V and HMS Rodney over the horizon. The Bismarck couldn't maneuver, but her guns still worked. For a brief moment, accurate German gunnery made it seem like another miracle might occur. But steering problems made sustained accuracy impossible. The British ships closed range systematically. At 9.02 a.m., a massive shell from Rodney destroyed the forward control station, killing most of the senior officers. Without proper fire control, the Bismarck's return fire became increasingly wild. The British pounded the superstructure to scrap metal. One by one, the German gun turrets fell silent. By 9.31 a.m., all main armament was out of action. The Bismarck had become a floating target, absorbing punishment that would have sunk any other ship twice over. Despite hundreds of direct hits, the Bismarck's armored citadel remained intact. Those thousands of tons of German steel armor were proving their worth. The ship was being destroyed from the outside, but her vital core stayed protected. Realizing capture was imminent, the surviving German officers activated scuttling charges throughout the ship. At 10.20 a.m., internal explosions began tearing the Bismarck apart from within. She rolled heavily to port and sank by the stern at 10.40 a.m. Of over 2,200 men aboard, only 114 survived the icy waters. Decades later, when explorers located the wreck, 12,500 feet down, they discovered the truth. The main armor belt showed only minimal penetration from British shells. The Bismarck had been battered into submission, but she remained structurally sound until her own crew sent her to the bottom. The Bismarck's eight-month career marked the end of the battleship era. Her destruction proved that surface ships, no matter how powerful, could not survive against concentrated air and naval attack. 
The future belonged to aircraft carriers and submarines. If you're fascinated by the incredible technology and tactical blunders that decided World War II, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Let me know in the comments which titan of engineering you'd like me to explore next. Thanks for watching.